something awesome planned for August and I want to share it with you today. And I also would love to answer some of your questions. I really love doing these Q and A's. So if you have any questions, please post in the uh, comments in the chat below. And we're gonna chat a little bit about a live lunch. So this is something that Nate and I have been planning for a while now, and it's going to be our very first live online uh, raw food classes. So we're going to be teaching lunch every single day for 21 days. We're going to be teaching how to make the wraps, salads, some soups or curries, all kinds of fun stuff that we love. And you get access to the recipes and the grocery lists and you can rewatch all of these lives if you want, if you miss any of them. So again, 21 days straight, it'll be from August 1st to the 21st and it's $198 to join in. So please use the code rawfood40 if you're interested in joining us for these classes. It's less than $10 a day. You get us every single day at 10 a.m. PST. We're gonna go live on Zoom, so you'll get a special link to join us. There's a little community of everyone who's gonna be signed up, and we'll be teaching these live classes every single day in August for those 21 days. So it's gonna be really fun, it's gonna be exciting, and I hope some of you join us because we are extremely excited. Passionate Rose Raw Journey says hello. Hello everybody who's joined. Again, if you have raw food questions, if you have wrap questions, if you have any questions about a live lunch, please post in the chat and we'll get to those today. Um, already we've got Passionate Rose says, will there be a chance to purchase the recipes from a live lunch? That's a great question. The recipes in a live lunch will be part of a live lunch. We will package a live lunch and sell it for less after because you won't be getting that live factor. You'll just be getting the replays. So it will be less. Um, we may sell the PDF by itself with just the recipes. We're not sure yet, but that could totally be an option and we may do that. But the videos will be repackaged. The course itself will be repackaged for less money. Um, and we may put it in a future bundle. We're thinking of doing that as well. So if you want the live action, if you want the one-on-one -on -one stuff, and we're gonna be talking with all the people in the Zoom, you can ask any questions you want. You can follow along with us live then join in now for the August 1st launch. Otherwise, you can wait for after because we will definitely be having it uh, to sell after the whole event is over. How long are the classes? Great question. Um, they can, they're probably going to range anywhere from about a half an hour to who knows, it could be a lot longer um, depending on the recipe, depending on the questions, depending on all kinds of stuff. But in each class, we will be teaching the recipe itself and the prep for the next day. So if we have to do wraps the next day, we will teach you the prep work needed and the best times to do the prep work so that you have a successful tomorrow. So we will basically teach the lunch in the morning. Well, morning for us, but it could be lunch for some other people. Um, and you can watch them again whenever you want. You get to watch the replays indefinitely. So you can rewatch and relearn and remind yourself of what we did. So we will teach the lunch itself for the day and then we will teach the prep for the next day. So it's really going to get you immersed in planning and prep and how we go about our day. Like if we want to have a wrap the next day, what do we have to do the day before to get that done? Even though it's not a lot of actual work, the planning itself is key to making a successful next day. So if we have to freeze any vegetables or chop anything in advance, we're gonna let you know that day. And in the PDF, it actually shows you a list of ingredients you need for the day and a list of ingredients you'll need for the prep for the day ne the next day. So we've laid it out as best we can to help you to learn how to do the prep. So again, for class times, it could any be anywhere from about 30 minutes to it could even be like well over an hour if we have a lot of questions or we get into a really good conversation that's going to be part of that too so that's the really cool aspect about it being live is that you get us every single day for 21 days to teach you all the stuff that we know and you can ask us any questions you want so it's gonna be so fun 
Lissa's love classes are great peeps. <laughs> awesome, awesome. Love your salads. Thank you so much. That would be great. Yes, I'm I'm really hoping that people can enjoy learning from us. We've, we've never done anything like this before, so it's new for us to go live every single day. It's it's taken a lot of work to get to this point. Um, building the back end, the website, building the PDF with the recipes, coming up with the recipes. There's also new wraps that we're gonna share with you. There's a pineapple teriyaki wrap. There's a Burberry uh, Napa doodle wrap. There's a barbecue mushroom strip wrap. So there's three wraps involved in here. There's mushroom pizza bites. There's lots of salads. Um, so it teaches you simple prep and it also teaches you more complex things to make. There's a cinnamon curry as well. So if you're interested in learning all the techniques that we use to make our raw food, please go check it out. The link is in my bio. It's the very first link. And please use code rawfood40 to get the correct price for the course. Um, you can do that just by following the link in my bio and clicking on the very first link. It's a yellow one. Um, happy to rewatch. Yes, you can rewatch all of them. Why you never share any recipe for the wrap for free? The reason is because these are incredibly special recipes and they're there for people who want to support my creativity and my work here on Instagram. So I don't have those ones for free simply because they are such special, very, very unique recipes and they are part of the hand salads ebook. Now the ebook retails for $35, but we always have a 40% off code. So it's only 21 bucks. If you want to get the recipes for the wraps, that's where you can find them and you can support my work and my creativity by doing so. Uh, I have lots of other free recipes. I have over 60 over on YouTube. So if you go to YouTube, if my YouTube channel, you can find in the link in my bio, there is a playlist over there for recipes. We've got a falafel burger, we've got pad thai, we've got all kinds of really yum stuff over there on YouTube. And if you wanna find some free recipes here on Instagram, in my guides, so if you go to my main page and you click on the guides, it's a little book right above my posts. It's a little book icon. If you tap on that, you can search my guides for recipe time. I have recipe time one and two. And in there, I share um, the posts that I have shared recipes on. So those are some free ones as well if you're interested. Hello from Montreal. Hello, hello. So great. I have to run to a meeting, but we'll catch you later. Awesome. Thank you so much for joining. And thanks to everybody for joining. I love doing these lives so much. I love answering your questions. What time of day for the live lunch? It will be at 10 a.m. PST, which is 1 p.m. EST. So on the East Coast, it's 1 p.m. On the West Coast, it'll be 10 a.m. And that's the time that we chose that we felt would probably be the best time um, for us as well because we have to prepare everything before our live every single day for 21 days. So it's going to be a lot of work on our end to plan. Uh, we were thinking of doing it at 9 a.m., but that was going to be way too early for us to do that. Um, so 10 a.m. was a good compromise. Um, and that's what we're going to do. And again, you can watch the replays. You're totally welcome to watch the replays. You have a great live cooking classes. <laughs> Thank you so much. You're great teachers. Mushroom one. Yeah, mushroom wrap and the mushroom pizzas are going to be so good. Um, Rach says I get irritated with the free question. It's your job and your recipes. Love you, Lissa. Thank you so much. Yeah, and I, it, that's, that's a, it's such a touchy subject because I try so much to help in so many ways and in order to do these lives and do the things that I do and answer hundreds of direct messages and comments every single day. And I help people behind the scenes for free. Like I like to send voice messages to people if they have com concerns or struggles or they want someone to bounce ideas off of or brainstorm solutions to or help them out in any way. I'm more than happy to help, but I spend hours every single day, like at least four or something sometimes six hours just replying and having conversations with people behind the scenes that people don't see. And I do that all for free. But in order to be able to do that, 
I have to still pay the bills. So <laughs> um, that's why I have the recipe books and the classes like this and things like that that I can offer to people in order to continue doing what I do for free behind the scenes. So again, if anyone ever has any questions, I am here to help you. Just send me a message on Instagram is the best place to get a hold of me. You can email me as well, um, but Instagram is definitely the best place. But I'm here to help you as best I can and still pay my bills at the same time. <laughs> How long do we have to sign up? You have forever to sign up, really. Basically, if you wanna catch all the live classes, you have until July 31st so that you are able to watch all of the lives, but you're more than welcome to sign up during a live lunch. Of course, you would have missed the whatever, however many you missed. So say you wanted to sign up August 5th, you could, but you would have missed the first five days live. You can always re-watch those videos because you'll have access to them. Um, so you can sign up anytime you want. It's totally up to you. And again, we may discount it further halfway through. We might have a bigger discount for those who would have missed the first live because the, the reason why it's 198 is because it's live. So you are getting us live every single day to answer your questions and to help you out and to teach you all of this stuff. But then after class, we will be discounting it and packaging it up as a class for you to get. So it really depends on how much you wanna spend. If you want to be part of the live classes, that's totally up to you, but you can really sign up anytime you like. And again, the link is in my bio. It's the very first one, the yellow button. Um, so go click on that. And if you just wanted to get the recipe books, my recipe books are also 40% off. Code is rawfood40 and the link is there too. And I also yesterday created my Amazon storefront. It's been a long time coming. <laughs> I've had so many people ask me to make an Amazon storefront. So I now have an Amazon storefront. You can find that in my bio. Just go to my bio, scroll down a little bit. It says uh, Alyssa's fave or fave Amazon list or something. Um, and that is all the stuff that we love, kitchen utensils, the stuff to make the wraps, so the trays and the plastic bags that we put the trays in. Um, we've got the dehydrator, the Vitamix, the food processor, the deli paper we use to wrap the wraps and even the spatula to spread the wraps. We've got all the tools that we love. We've got some supplement suggestions in there, books that we love that have changed our lives, my skincare that I love. Uh, what else is in there? There's a lot. So you can go check it out. That's all the Amazon affiliates. So that's totally up to you if you want to check that. Um, Watermelon Lime says, also recommend getting the wrap ebook in one of the bundles. Yeah, so the bundles, so I'm part of three bundles. This is a question I get often is there's lots of bundles and I thought they were once a year. What's up with all the bundles? So let's run it down really quickly here. I am in three bundles. I organize two of them with other people and I'm in one as a contributor. So the ones I organized is the ultimate raw vegan bundle, which is an exclusively raw bundle. This is only raw content that is in this bundle. This one runs once a year and usually in the spring. So May is usually the time that it runs and it's always brand new content. So every time you see a raw bundle, it's always brand new. You're never going to have the same content in this bundle ever. It's always gonna be brand new, never before released. So it's a great way to get all of the raw content that's new for cheap, but we only run it for like 10 or 11 days. Then I also or help to organize the vegan health bundle. This is a very big bundle and it's not all raw, but there is a lot of raw stuff in it. And this is also always different every year. It's not necessarily new, although a lot of people do create new stuff for it, but it is once a year as well. And next year's will be in March. So March of 2024. This one has a lot of plant-based doctors involved, like Dr. McDougal likes to join in, Dr. Furman does, um, Dr. Nikki Davis, and we had Brooke Goldner one year. So there are a lot of doctors that join in on this one. Um, and again, this one's March, 2024, and it only runs once a year. Then I am part of the plant-based bundle. I do not help organize this one. This one, I am simply a contributor. This one is, it tends to be different for the most part, but old content goes in that one. So if you really wanted to buy like a lot of my content that you might not have had before, the plant-based bundle is a great one to get because I like to put a lot of stuff in that one. Because it can be old content, I usually 
put at least five or six different things in there. So it's a great way to get some of my content. Um, and the last one that we did had hand salads. I'm thinking of, um, they usually run one in November, so over Black Friday, and I believe they're gonna do it again this year. They haven't mentioned anything about it yet, but that's usually what they do every year. And I think for the November one, I will have my hand salads book and my burger book and the taco book. Like I'm gonna put all the good stuff in that bundle. <laughs> so watch for that if you haven't had any of those. That's coming in November. So yeah, three bundles. Two of them only happen once a year. The plant-based bundle usually happens two, sometimes three times a year. So it depends on when they decide to run it. But that one is organized in the UK and they're wonderful. And we really like to be a part of that one too. So again, bundles are great ways to get our content for cheap <laughs> and you get other people's stuff as well. So it's not just our stuff that you're getting. You're getting a lot of other stuff. So I hope that clarifies a little bit of the bundle scene going on. Um, just one of the hand salad ebook was so much. Oh, it's worth so much. Thank you so much. So we keep the classes access forever. Yes. So once you sign up for a live lunch and you join in with the live calls, you get access to the courses, the classes and replays and the PDFs and everything forever. And when I say forever, I don't mean forever, like forever. It just means forever as long as the classes are online. Like if the host that hosts our classes goes out of business, then obviously our content won't be up there. But for us, indefinitely, we will keep it up, which could, I mean, I've been working with this company for over eight years now and they're doing great and they co are constantly growing. So I don't foresee them going out of business anytime soon. So <laughs> I'm assuming that they're going to be up indefinitely. Um, just depends on the internet. So, but yes, you do get access forever. Um, in terms of the internet, but you can rewatch them anytime you want. You always have access. You just log in and watch the videos and download the PDFs. It's totally up to you. You've got access to that. Noon Central Time. I'm in Texas. Can't wait. Yes! Noon Central Time is a great time to make lunch. So if you do want, go check out a live lunch. The link is in my bio and you're more than welcome to join. We would love to have you. Um, there are limited spots. We only have enough room for 100 signups. So we, we're not anywhere close to that, so don't worry about it, but we do have limited spots. So can we access forever once we join? Yes, you do. Um, you get to rewatch all the replays. Obviously, you only watch the lives when they happen, but after that, you can watch them. Do the raw wraps have apples? Some of them do, yes. I really enjoy using apples in the wraps because of the pectin in the apples is such an amazing fiber for the pliability of the wraps. So some wraps have apples, other wraps have other fruit. And many of them do have dates. I use onions a lot because the inulin fiber in the onions is such an amazing fiber. Seriously, inulin is next level awesome. <laughs> Not only for the pliability and the flexibility of the wraps, but for the gut microbiome, it is incredible for gut growth. So if you're looking to grow your gut, onions are there. <laughs> They're so amazing. Onions and um, Jerusalem artichoke and anything with inulin is going to really feed the gut. Do you have a book on how to start an online business? That's a great question. I actually don't have anything right now for starting an online business. I was working with Ted Carr in his academy, so I do highly recommend his Creator Academy. Um, that is a really great place. I think it's called Contentpreneurship or whatever. Um, so I was working with him teaching about the social media aspect of having a business, but I don't actually have anything on doing the business side. Um, that could be something that I do venture into in the future. I'm not sure where the future will hold, what the future will hold for raw food romance, but that could be a possibility as well. Um, we've got a question. Do you have a preferred probiotic? Um, so for probiotics, I personally don't take probiotics because I grow my gut with food. So I feed my gut bacteria with prebiotics and I actually just did my fourth gut microbiome test. Uh, about a week and a half ago. So I'm just waiting for the results. I'm excited to see how adding psyllium and extra onion to my diet has improved or changed maybe my microbiome, we'll see. Uh, because inulin um, and psyllium, there's something in the psyllium that feeds a bacteria called Roseburia. And Roseburia bacteria produce a lot of butyrate. 
And butyrate is an amazing short chain fatty acid that helps to balance out any uh, undesirable bacteria. So feeding the roseburia with the psyllium that I have in my wraps is creating a lot more butyrate in my colon and it's feeding my colon cells and it is creating an environment unfriendly to undesirable bacteria. So hopefully that along with the allicin and the inulin from the onions that I've been eating, a huge amount of onions lately, um, that can help to balance out some of the specific bacteria that my body needs work on. Um, everyone needs work on different things. My overall gut score is currently, as of January, was 93.5 percentile. So I'm doing really good considering I came from bottle fed, so I was not set up with a good bacteria when I started my life. And I dealt with 15 years of gut dysbiosis and uh, candida overgrowth. So I've come a long, long way in the last nine years of following a raw diet, but there's always room for improvement. So on my gut test, it was showing that I need just a few little tweaks. Again, I'm at 93 and a half percentile, so there's not much of a window for perfection, which I don't believe exists anyway. But to work on my bacteria, psyllium and onion were two very important things that I can include in my diet to help with my specific bacteria. When it comes to probiotics, I would suggest for people to do a gut test for one and see what their microbiome is like because I worked in the natural health industry for over a decade and I've been in natural health for over 20 years now. I started when I was 21 in a little kind of a, an organic family owned grocery store and I started doing nutritional consulting and taking school for all of that. And what I learned most was that for supplements, it's super individual for probiotics because every single person's gut is different. It's like your fingerprints. So everyone's gonna have a different fingerprint in their gut. And what bacteria probiotic works for one person may not work for the other because it really depends on your specific gut microbiome. And that's why I suggest doing tests and then adjusting your diet based on the bacteria that you need to work on. So not everyone needs to work on the exact same bacteria. Obviously, things like acidophilus and bifidus and all that are really great to take, but to work on your specific combination of bacteria is up to you to do and to discover. And I always say, and I've always said this too, is try out different brands of probiotics. Again, I'm vegan, so I would only choose the non-dairy vegan probiotics, obviously, but I would try out different brands and see which ones really feel good. And you'll be able to notice if a, a probiotic is helpful or if it's not doing anything. And then you can just try different brands and find the one that works best for you because probiotics are very individual to the person and their gut microbiome. So that's what I would have to say to that question. Thank you for asking it. That's a really good one. Um, I'm allergic to fruits. My mouth was feeling strange when I switched to 80-20 raw. Um, most of the time, there's a problem with eating under ripe fruit. And most fruit really isn't at the stage of ripeness that we would love to have it at. So if fruit is causing any irritability in your, in your mouth, it could be because it's unripe, especially things like pineapple, because pineapple has an enzyme in it called bromelain, which actually eats protein. It's, that's its job. It breaks down protein. And you've got protein in your mouth, your muscles and your cells are made with protein. So if you're eating pineapple that's unripe and that has this, this enzyme, high quantities of this enzyme in it, it can actually feel a little burny. So I would investigate that a little further and see if you actually are allergic to the fruit or if you're just having a reaction to unripe fruit. Um, that could be something as well. Um, which wrap most resembles rye bread? I made homemade pastrami seitan and want to mix those into my raw wraps. Honestly, I don't have anything that's specifically like rye bread for the wraps. I do have um, an apple rye. <laughs> I call it apple rye, but there's no rye in it. Um, it's in the party food ebook and as well as in the burger book. But for the wraps, I would recommend using the everything but the bagel wrap. That's pretty universal. It goes with everything. It's kind of like the 
the black tank top. Like you can wear it with anything. <laughs> so the everything but the bagel wrap is probably gonna be your best bet. That's our favorite. We make that one all the time. It lasts the longest when we wrap it with dry ingredients. It's it's fluffy. It's That one's our, definitely our favorite, everything but the bagel. And if anyone's interested in getting the wrap book, 40% off code is rawfood40 and the link is in my bio for the eBooks. Um, I would love an ebook on how to do ebooks. That's a great suggestion. And that's on my list of things that I might think about doing. Um, I have so many projects on the go that I'm working on right now. So first up is a live lunch that starts on August 1st. So hopefully that goes well. And then after a live lunch, then I'm going to be working on the print version of the wrap book. So hand salads is going to be in print on Amazon. Hopefully, Hopefully early fall. I'm hoping to have it in September. I'm hoping, I'm hoping. It's a lot of work, it's a big project because I have to completely reformat the book because print versions you can't tap on links. So I have to make a completely separate, uh, like a Google document with all of the links and then I have to make a QR code and then I have to reformat the book so that I can have that in there. I have to take out any links, like it's a big project. I have to make a cover too. I don't have a designer, I'm doing everything myself and I have to make sure that there's no spelling errors um, and all that kind of stuff. So it's a big project to reformat for print and that hopefully will happen in September, but def you guys will definitely know when the print version is on because I will be sharing it in my stories. Uh, but that's a big project um, for me, and I'm also gonna be working on new content for the bundles in 2024. I'm thinking of doing um, like a kid's, a kid's book, a kid's friendly recipe, how to get kids to eat more uh, fruits and vegetables, like just suggestions and tips and ideas and stuff for that. Um, Nate and I are also going to be making our hiking, camping, travel, road trip raw food book showing how we travel as raw foodies with recipes. Um, there's gonna be a freeze dryer section for people who have a freeze dryer, how we make our cold soaks. Um, there's gonna be new wrap recipes in there as well. So that's coming in 2024. Um, and I have other little ideas too that will pop up during the year, but those are all projects that are on my plate currently. So a lot of stuff. Kay is asking, how do you add psyllium to your food? So one way that I love that we've been adding psyllium is in the wraps. Each wrap has one tablespoon of psyllium powder per wrapper. So these wraps are a great way to get some psyllium into your diet, but you wanna also make sure that you're drinking enough water to compensate because psyllium husk soaks up a lot of water, but it also soaks up toxins in your colon. So psyllium is a really incredible, um, high soluble fiber, high prebiotic for your good microbiome, and it pulls toxins out of the body. So it's an incredible ingredient. It's actually the husk of a seed. So it's just basically like eating fiber, really. And we don't digest fiber, fiber, but our gut microbiome does. So it's really important to feed our microbiome. And when we feed our microbiome, they feed us with incredible things. So it's a great symbiotic relationship, but we have to feed them the fiber. So we like to add it in our wraps, but you could also add a teaspoon to a sauce if you want to really thicken it, because it really thickens things up really good, because um, it sucks up so much water. You could also just mix it in water and drink it if you wanted to. Um, some people sprinkle it on their salads. Um, you could do that. But again, if you are adding psyllium, just add extra water, like drink an extra two cups of water a day throughout the day. Sandra's asking, do you supplement? So I don't really supplement like too much. I do use vitamin B12 and vitamin D when I'm not in the sun. So I do take vitamin D and vitamin B12, but they're not often. Uh, I used to be a little bit more regular with them, but in the last couple of years, I really haven't been regular with taking them. I did a blood test about two months ago-ish, um, and the results were my B12 is higher than mid-range, so I'm doing very well with my B12, and my vitamin D is normal levels too, so just spending more time um, daily in the sun instead of just once in a while. Uh, that's something that I'm working on as well to really expose my skin to the sun for like 20 minutes a day. That's my goal. And also the B12 is doing fine. So I would really only supplement if it was getting too low. Um, sometimes I'll take a supplement here and there if I remember, but it's not really a daily thing for me like it used to be. 
Um, I don't feel I need it. My blood test is showing I don't, and I haven't taken it really regular in the last couple of years. So again, you want to test yourself, make sure that you need the supplement before taking it, but you can take them proactively. Just don't overdo um, the supplements if you don't need to. Um, I also have K2, a vegan version of vitamin K2, but I don't really take that one often either. I don't even remember the last time I took that supplement, like months, months, if not, like I would take like a couple pills, like a whole year. I'm really not good with supplements. I'd rather eat the food and get the whole food. So I've been actually using natto. It's a fermented soybean, and this is the highest food source of vitamin K2 that there is. So having a little bit of natto in my smoothies or in my salad dressings, preferably, just to have a little tiny bit in there, you can't really notice when it's in there, especially in the savory ones, but that is a great source of vitamin K2. Also, in my Amazon storefront under the supplement tab, I do have a fermented soybean, which is natto uh, supplement. It's a powder, so it's basically freeze-dried natto, which is considered raw, freeze-dried natto that's in a powder form, so you could just put a little bit in your in your dressings every single day to supplement K2 in a whole food form. That's the best way to do that. So otherwise, I don't take anything else. <laughs> um, what about probiotics for making raw cheese spread recipes? Good question. So the probiotics that we use for the raw cheese is... It has to have, I think, three things. Number one, it has to be vegan. It has to be vegan. Number two, it has to be in capsule form so that you can open it and pour the contents into the cashew cheese. And number three, it has to have acidophilus in it to ferment the, uh, like it has to have a lactobacillus bacteria in there to ferment the cashew cheese. So it needs those three things. Nature's Way has a really good one. Again, vegan, has to be in capsule and has to have lactobacillus or acidophilus in there to be able to do that. So any brand is really great as long as it has those three things, you're good to go. Um, I wonder if Dr. Greger has a 100% gut score. Would be very interesting to see his gut score. I have um, a few friends who have done their gut microbiome scores and both of them have been raw for a lot longer than I have, but their scores are in the 60s, uh, low 70s. So. They also do a little different style of raw than I do and no shade on anyone's style, but um, we have been actively trying to grow our microbiomes and it's showing in our tests. So the more variety that we add to our diets, the more different kinds of vegetables that we eat, the more kinds of fruits and the more variety that we have every single day in our salads has been making such a huge difference for our guts and I would never go back to the way I was eating before or even when I was first raw, I wasn't eating as much variety as I am now. So I do feel that was a good transition as well because if you add too much variety too fast, the gut can't keep up. So it's not that the variety is the problem, it's the fact that you just need to grow your gut so that you can enjoy more variety. So it would be really interesting to hear other people's gut test scores. I've seen, um, I know um, Mike the Vegan had a video. That's actually how we found out about the gut testing was Mike the Vegan had a video a couple years ago and his gut score was 83%. And I was like, oh no, no, mine. So we got tests and found out ours was 83% as well. So it was the same as Mike the Vegan's score, um, but we have tested since then and currently my gut is at 93.5%. So hoping for a couple percentage more in the next test results, which should be here in about a week or two, hopefully. Um, but again, I'm not like, I don't have any like, emotional ties to it at all. I just, I'm curious. I wanna see if adding the wraps, because they're so high in onion and psyllium, if they've changed. Also working on my omega-3, because I wanna get tested for my omega-3 with Omega Quant. They're a company, all you do is you send away for the test, I think it's like 160 bucks or something, but you send away for the test and they send it to you and then you have like this prick, you prick your finger and then you squeeze the blood on the little card and then you mail it over. And what they do is they test the amount of omega-3 and omega-6 and stuff in your blood and the cell wall because our cell walls are made with fats. So they can actually test 
what kinds of fats that you consume that create your cell wall. And we want to have a specific ratio of omega-6 to 3. And I need to work, I know, on my omega-3s, making sure that I have chia or flax every single day. And lowering my omega-6 content, like lowering the sesame seeds, the sunflower, the avocado. Um, the I really don't eat a lot of coconut, but keeping my omega-6 intake on the lower end, not eliminating it, but keeping it on the lower end and increasing my omega-3 intake. Increasing, obviously, I already eat a lot of greens, but leafy greens have a decent amount of omega-3 in them, especially romaine. Um, if you're eating a lot of it, you can get a lot of omega-3 from romaine. Uh, berries are really great sources, but all leafy greens are going to have small amounts of omega-3 in them, so it's about volume. It's about making sure you eat enough and lowering those omega-6s down so that you can actually create EPA and DHA from that omega-3. Uh, what are your thoughts on spirulina? So I think it's a great source of protein, for sure. If people are looking for more protein on a raw diet, that's a great source. I personally don't take spirulina. We have some spirulina. I just, it's just not something that's part of our our diet and it's not like no shade or anything just you know how some things just aren't part of your life and they're not really part of your routine um, so that's why it's just not something that I'm drawn to or that I care to eat but for some people it's a great thing if they want to eat the spirulina um, it's a great source of protein it's got a lot of chlorophyll in it it's a really great um, option if that's what you want um, invite plants to every meal says, I hope you do content on food photography. I have actually, um, again, as part of Ted Carr's, uh, course creator, um, content preneurship program or whatever years ago, we would do classes on food photography. So I really enjoyed doing those and I may again, do those in the future. I might do a class on that, maybe like a $50, weekend class or something if you guys are interested send me a dm and let me know that you are because i want to put on content and i want to do things that you are interested in um so that you come and join can't wait for the travel book yeah that's going to be so fun i was going to ask if you show how to pitch a tent next time when you go camping your setup was so cute um yeah actually uh, we're going camping um this not this weekend, but next weekend. So we will definitely have either a time lapse or video because I want to do a video of the trip showing how we prepare and what we take. And I have another video of Nate and I when we went to the canyons. We went canyoneering and rafting on the Colorado River a couple weekends ago, and I have all the footage for that. But the videos like that, the adventure videos for YouTube, take like 20 hours to edit. So I have to squeeze in like an hour here, an hour there to try and get these videos done for you. So, uh, but that was a really fun one. And we definitely need to do more of those videos because people love them so much. So we have two big camping trips planned uh, the rest of the summer. So I'll definitely make sure that I film a lot for you guys so you can see how we set up, what we take, and all the fun stuff. So Yolanda's asking, what microbiome test do you recommend? I recommend Ombre Lab, O-M-B-R-E-L-A-B.com. That's the one that I recommend. Uh, you can also go with Viome. They're also equally amazing. There's also Biome Site, Biome, S-I-G-H-T. That is a UK based company. And that's actually where we upload our Ombre Lab data to because they have a more in depth kind of comprehensive view of the bacteria and it's got more details to your test results. So Biome Site is a great website too. But if you need, um, a link or if you want help deciding send me a dm because i'm here to help uh, do you go to a doctor or test to test or online service i use online services currently um, i don't have a doctor right now that's doing that i think i would request to uh, have my blood test results read by dr rick dina um, i thoroughly trust him and he's a raw vegan and he's amazing so I would definitely check out with him. I don't know if he still does it, but I would definitely ask because I'd love to have him read my blood test. Nate and I do want to get um, full panel blood tests soon just to see where we're at because I think it's healthy to test 
where you're at to see what's going on in your body and to not just assume that everything's okay just because you eat raw. There's always ways to tweak and ways to change, but the microbiome test is done at home. The, uh, the omega test is done at home and the blood test that I did, I did at home as well. It's from a company called Routine, R-O-O, T-I-N-E, and they have a few different blood tests. They have a high sensitive C-reactive protein test with the B12 and the D. So that's the one that I did. I can't even remember how much it was, like 150 bucks or something. I'm gonna do that one again once I've been doing like more omega-3, um, but without the B12 and, the, and more sunshine. So when I'm doing more sunshine, I wanna see if that changes my vitamin D level. Cause I like to do changes that don't involve supplements. I wanna test and then try it out without doing a supplement first to see if that changes. And that's why I was doing the gut microbiome. I haven't taken any probiotics except for those in the cheese that we've made a couple times. So it's not like it's gonna make a difference, but I've changed my gut microbiome from 83% to 93% just with food alone, which has been incredible, but it's taken me two, two years, over two years now um, that I've been doing this. So it's very interesting. Um, you can do a lot of tests at home now. They are so much nicer because you don't have to go anywhere and they're great. Let's see what else. Uh, hope someday you teach us to make tempeh. So tempeh is a really cool food. It's a fermented soy product. Although it's cooked first, I consider it living food and I consider it as part of a healthy raw vegan diet because it's alive. So I'm all about eating living foods and tempeh, if it's unpasteurized, is alive. It's loaded with life and so good for you. So I don't know how to make tempeh. Um, we get our tempeh unpasteurized when we go to LA because we go to San Diego Tempeh. They have a booth set up at the Hollywood market, I think, and we get our tempeh from him and it's raw and unpasteurized. You have to eat it right away, like within a day or two, uh, cause it can go moldy fast. Uh, it's so sensitive to that, but um, we do eat that. And there is somebody online, her name is Raw Chef Yin, Y-I-N, and she teaches how to make raw tempeh. So if you're interested, go check her out. She's really awesome. And yes, watermelon lime, look at you, just said it next. <laughs> raw Chef Yin has a course on how to make raw tempeh. So not raw tempeh, but tempeh that is unpasteurized. So go check her out. An ebook of meal plan with wraps. Ooh, that's a great idea. Perhaps, perhaps. The Alive Lunch is definitely gonna have wraps in it. Um, our, all the recipes that are freeze dried can also be done in the dehydrator. So the freeze dryer section is going to be its own section because not everyone has a freeze dryer and freeze drying food is completely different than dehydrating food. We will have dehydrator recipes, obviously, because most people have a dehydrator. Not everyone has a freeze dryer, but there are people out there who do have a freeze dryer or who can invest in one. So we wanna be able to cover both people, people who have a dehydrator and people who have a freeze dryer. So there will be different recipes. There can be some overlap, like for example, freeze dryer is great. You, uh, you can do freeze dried bell peppers, but you can also do dehydrated bell peppers. They're just harder from the dehydrator and they're softer from the freeze dryer. Some stuff you can only make in the freeze dryer. Other stuff is better in the dehydrator. So it really depends, but we're going to discuss all of that. So that'll be in the book as well as how to make your own powders. Um, like powdered stuff that you can add to your food, how to freeze dry miso. It's gonna be really awesome. Pretty sure I read from nutritionfacts.org that spirulina should be avoided because of liver toxins, type of blue green algae. I have heard this too, but um, definitely check into the type of spirulina that you're consuming because I have heard some brands are better than others. So that's definitely something to look into for sure. Uh, let's see what else we got here. What foods are best for the gallbladder? Any raw foods are gonna be amazing for the gallbladder and keeping things low fat, but not no fat. There's a problem with no fat because if you're not consuming fats, you're not actually using the bile that your body can usually create and it can get backed up and actually cause gallstones. So low fat is ideal, like 10 to 15% total calories from fats, but not no fat. That can risk you developing gallstones later on in life. So 
I would definitely recommend eating all raw foods. Anything hydrating and raw is going to be amazing. And keeping things low fat, getting rid of the oils and the animal products is going to be really awesome for the gallbladder. So thank you so much. If anyone has any other questions, please post in the chat and please go check out a live lunch. The link is in my bio. It's the first link in there. If you're interested in joining us for our daily live lunch classes for 21 days straight in August, every single day is going to have live classes. So please go check that out and use code rawfood40 at checkout so you get the correct price on those classes. Um, ooh, there's a question here. What to eat if you have gallstones? Um, so there are some things like I would say more supplements. Uh, there are certain ones that you can take. Actually, if you send me a DM, it would probably be better because I would like to know what you're eating now. Um, it goes so much deeper than that, but I would recommend having lots of fruit, drinking lots of water and sticking to tender leafy greens, um, like romaine and, um, butter leaf lettuces, but eating a lot of them can, can be helpful for that as well. So yeah, just eating more raw food in general. That's another thing too, that I wanted to really point out is that people are always looking for specific things for specific health issues. When in reality, a specific health issue is just your body saying, I'm out of balance and I need balance. So instead of looking at specific things for specific issues, look at the big picture. Are you sleeping properly? Are you exercising? Are you drinking enough water? Are you practicing stress relieving techniques? Are you spending time in nature? Do you have great relationships? Are you following your passion? Are you eating a whole food, plant-based, high raw diet? Are you eating low fat? Are you doing the basic things? Because that is what needs to change first before you dive into those little tiny specific things. Because if you don't change the basis, the foundation of what you're doing every day, then adding blueberries is, I mean, it's gonna help slightly, but it's not going to help if you're not gonna change the foundation of what you're doing every single day. So it's super important to change those basic things that we all know that we need to do <laughs> um, first to get that going. Nadia is asking, I do CrossFit four days a week, gravitate towards salads with avocado and cashews. Yikes, what am I doing wrong? I still eat fruit and greens, just love my fats. So it's okay to have fats. It's not about no fat, but cashews and avocados are too high in omega-6 and you're probably not getting enough omega-3. So what I would recommend is either choose cashew or avocado, not both. So if you're gonna do avocado, half an avocado on your salad, but no other fats with it. And for lunch, I would use chia seeds because we wanna have a balance of omega-6 and omega-3. So you're gonna wanna lower your omega-6 intake and you wanna increase your omega-3 intake by eating more chia and more flax seeds every single day to compensate. Because if you're eating too many omega-6s, which are really high in basically all nuts, avocados, and coconut, very high in omega-6. It's very easy to eat omega-6. And we need some omega-6, but not what we're eating. So what happens is you have one enzyme, one enzyme that both converts omega-6 into its uh, co like compounds and omega-3 into EPA and DHA. EPA and DHA are what we need for healthy cell structure, healthy brain function, healthy heart. These are the things that we need from omega-3. The problem is we have one enzyme that does both jobs. And if you're eating too high omega-6, this enzyme is being hoarded by the omega-6. And omega-6 actually breaks down into pro-inflammatory compounds. So the more omega-6 you have, the more inflammation you have. And that enzyme is too busy dealing with all of this and not busy enough to deal with the omega-3. So what you want is to lower your omega-6 and increase your omega-3. So it's ideal to have a one-to-one -one ratio. So the enzyme can be used for both. So you're creating the EPA and DHA from the omega-3, and you're not creating as many pro-inflammatory things from the omega-6. So I hope that makes sense. You can still have your omega-6, just lower them down and increase your omega-3 from chia and flax mainly. Hemp is a, an okay source. It's more like a, 
It's more kind of balanced. It's not as high in omega-3 as chia and flax are. Those are the top sources. But adding more greens to your salad can really help as well, like more romaine, more lettuce, more greens of all different kinds, because greens are higher in omega-3 as well. So if you put chia or flax in your dressing, have lots of greens in your salad, that's going to help balance out your omega-6 to 3 ratio. Um, will you save this live? Yes, of course. It will also be on YouTube. I will save it and post it on YouTube as well. Thank you so much for asking these questions. They're so great. Is a tablespoon of chia or flax seeds per day enough? That sounds great. But also, like I said, increasing your greens, eating way more greens. Fruit is amazing. Fruit is essential. We need to be eating our fruit, but it's really easy to eat fruit. So eat your fruit, but also increase your greens and make sure that you're having um, your omega fats. And Nate and I do a tablespoon of chia or flax per day. Usually in our lunch salad, we really don't notice it in there. So it's really great. Nadia is saying, thanks for the great explanation. You're so welcome. The omega-3, omega-6 thing is really fascinating um, because a lot of people believe that we can't convert omega-3 into EPA and DHA, and that's why we need fish oil. However, our bodies can convert omega-3 into EPA and DHA. Some people more than others, but we can all convert omega-3 into EPA and DHA. This enzyme does that. But like I said, the enzyme is too busy dealing with all the omega-6s that we eat. And omega-6 is extremely high in oils, and that's why we don't consume oils, is because it's a very, 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 very high source of omega-6. And most people are eating a lot of processed foods as well, and they're consuming way too many omega-6s, like sometimes upwards of 40 omega-6s to one omega-3. And this enzyme is having a really hard time converting any of the omega-3 into EPA and DHA, and then they believe that they need fish oil because the fish convert it in their bodies from algae. So if you do need EPA and DHA, you can always get a vegan algae supplement if that's a concern. Um, but most of the time, all you have to do is lower your sixes and increase your threes so that they're a good balance. So thank you guys for listening to that. And again, go check out a live lunch if you're interested in joining us in August for our daily live raw food kitchen classes. We're going to be teaching how to make the wraps, how to make salads, how to make sushi, how to wet chop, uh, the tools we use. We're going to be answering your questions. It's all going to be live in August. So go check that out. It's called A Live Lunch. And if you wanted to get any of our recipe books, if you want to support us and all the work that we do here and behind the scenes, if you enjoy our content, go check out our eBooks and go grab some. Use code rawfood40 to get 40% off anything. All the links to everything, YouTube, email list, eBooks, A Live Lunch, everything, the links are in my bio or in the description box if you're watching on YouTube. So. Um, does olive oil contain more six than three? Yes, olive oil con contains a lot of omega-6, so uh, olives as well. The only two things that have higher omega-3 than omega-6 in the seed form or oil form is flax or chia. Those are the only two that have higher omega-3 than omega-6. Everything else is going to have higher omega-6 pretty much. So focus on whole food. Oil is a processed fractionated food. It's 100% fat and there's no fiber in it. Um, it's not ideal for us to consume oils. If you want olive oil, eat the olives. Eat the whole olives, chop them up into your salad if you want the benefits from the olives. But I would recommend doing whole chia. Chia is actually only 55% fat. The rest is fiber. It's pretty amazing. It's an amazing superfood and I highly suggest chia seeds and flax seeds as your top sources for omega-3 and then lower those omega-6s. Don't eat oils. <laughs> Um, that's just my opinion. I don't, I don't, I'm not into the oils. I don't do, I haven't eaten oil in almost nine years now, so we don't use it in our house. Um, I will put it on my skin, <laughs> but I won't consume it. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this live. Thank you so much for joining me today and go check out the links in my bio for all the goodies. Send me a DM. If you have any questions about anything, I'm going to go enjoy my lunch smoothie. I have it ready for me to enjoy now. I'm so excited. It's, uh, for those wondering who are still here, it's five bananas, five dates, a tablespoon of cacao powder, 
and a little bit of vanilla extract with two cups of water and ice. I like to add ice to my smoothies because it adds coldness without being cold. I'm not a huge fan of using frozen stuff for my smoothies because I feel so cold inside from it, unless it's ice cream. I mean, ice cream is a little different, but with the smoothies, if you add ice, it's cold up here, but it's not cold in the body. And I really like that. So that's a great tip for people who might feel like some smoothies are too cold. Um, I find it hard to drink like in my mouth. It's, I don't really enjoy the actual super cold smoothies. I'd rather them be just ice cold. Uh, from the ice. So I'll add like two cups of ice to my smoothie and it's nice and refreshing, but it's not freezing on the inside. So thank you again so much, all of you. I love you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for all your love and support. It truly means the world to me and we'll be back for another live at some point. Um, but until then, mwah, Frida.